Hi there! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be making a brand new doll. Mini-me! But wait, I can already hear the comment section. You already have a mini-me doll. He's introducing this video. Well, this video is to show how he came to be. How I came to be? Well, without any further delay, let's get into it! Wait, no, no, no! To start, we're going to use Monster High's Deuce Gorgon. To remove his face, take a Q-tip soaked in acetone and swipe away his facial details with a swooping motion. Whee! Make sure to squeeze his head to get the pain out of his lip crease. I always go over my dolls with a paper towel soaked in acetone to wipe off the remainder of their face paint. Now we get to have a little bit of spa time. Fill up a cup with boiling water and dunk them in. Don't worry, they don't feel any pain. Or at least I hope they don't. Once the vinyl is nice and soft, we're gonna pop his head off. Now this is something you don't see every day. The neck peg is actually missing a piece, but that's fine because I cut off this part anyway. Now it's time to remove his skull cap. With enough force, you can actually remove it. Now, looking over it, you can see there are some glue stains and some razor marks from where I cut it off, but that's fine because we're gonna cover it with hair anyway. Speaking of hair, first you're going to take some yarn and an object to wrap it around. Once you finish wrapping it around, you're going to cut it off and you'll get several equal sized lengths of yarn. Now take one of those lengths and start pulling it apart. There should be about four strands per length, depending on what type of yarn you use. Once you have enough, you're going to take his head and draw on his hairline. From here, we need to create holes for his new hair. Take a large needle and stab it into his head. Look, now he's a unicorn. Now take a strand of yarn and loop it through your reroute tool. Mine is a hand drill from Joann's that has a needle with the eye cut out then plunge it into his head. I do apologize, most of the footage here is off frame, so we're gonna skip ahead to him completed. Once the hairline is complete, yes, yes, we see, nice complete hairline, I don't know why I did that, we're gonna find the center of his head and stab a new hole to anchor his future hairstyle. Once we have four or five pieces, we have completed his hair. Now we are going to glue his hair in place. To do this, take non-water soluble glue, I personally use fabric tack, and you're going to put it in his head through his neck hole. Make sure to coat all the plugs on the inside of his head. This is very important because we are actually going to be brushing out his hair later. Once you get all the glue in there, take a Q-tip or another object and swirl it around on the inside to make sure all the plugs have been coated. The next day. After 24 hours, the glue should be dry, so we're going to take a pet brush and we're going to brush out his hair. This is going to make his hair nice and soft and silky. Now, I know you can see some glue in his hair, but that's fine because we can actually remove it with some acetone later. Now take a flat iron, and we're going to flatten all of his hair to make it silky. Now 
once we finish with that, we're gonna put his head onto a stick, and he... He kind of looks like a troll from the early 2000s. Then we're gonna flat iron it again, which does absolutely nothing but mess up his hair and create more texture. If you do this, just grab a pet brush and you can smooth it back out again. Next, we're gonna wrap him up. I have him wrapped up in a paper towel and some blue tape because his hair was a little hard to cover with just fabric. Unfortunately, it has been raining nonstop for the past few weeks in Sacramento. So we can't work on this face right now. So we're gonna work on his clothes! This pattern is from DJ Requiem. I'll have it linked below for reference. Now we're gonna pin on the shirt in the sleeve piece to start with. Then we grab the collar and decide not to pin it yet. Once everything but the collar is pinned, we can cut it out. I'm actually gonna include extra seam allowance here so I can glue down the edges differently than the pattern instructs. Now we're going to take a scrap of fabric, but not this one. This one will do perfect. And we're going to fold it in half. Take your collar piece and pin it on, and then we're going to get out our scissors and decide we don't like how it's placed and we're going to put it on the other side. Why am I like this? Now that I've decided this is better for some reason, we're gonna cut it out again, and we'll have our tiny collar piece. Once we've finished cutting everything out, we're gonna iron the pieces off camera. With the edges nicely ironed, we're gonna glue down the raw edges. I use Mod Podge fabric glue for this. When gluing down, make sure not to get it on the outside of the fabric, as this glue does not wash out. Now to glue the collar piece, which is honestly the most frustrating because it's on a curve, but it's worth the extra effort and struggle. Now we're gonna take these pieces and sew them together. Unfortunately, I forgot to set up my camera near a sewing machine. So this is what a finished shirt looks like, minus the buttons. And now I'm going to sew some snaps on the front. Honestly, this was really difficult to do on camera, so this is kind of what they look like when they're done. Now that the weather's cleared up, we're going to move on to his face. To start, take some chalk pastels and shade the face how you like. Everyone tells me my dolls look sunburnt, so I go a little too heavy with this step, but you can do whatever you want here. Since this is a self-portrait, I have several pictures of me that I'm referencing off screen. Make sure to darken up the inside of the nostrils. And now we're gonna map out the eyebrows. This is honestly my least favorite part and the most frustrating. So if you have to move around to get comfortable, feel free. I actually only know one doll artist that likes this step. Comment below if you know who that is.
Once his eyebrows are blocked in, I'm going to take a white pencil and highlight under the brows, the center of the forehead since I have a scar there, and the cupid's bow. But since he's a boy doll, I'm going to make sure it's not too harsh. Next, I'm going to brighten up his lips with some chalk pastels, and then draw some lines over it with watercolored pencil. Make sure to get in that leap cri- <laughs> Leap Chris. Make sure to get in that lip crease, or his lips will be lacking definition. Once the base drawing is complete, we're going to go over our previous layer again to darken and lighten certain parts of his face. Once you feel like you've gotten as far as you can, go ahead and take him outside and spray another layer of sealant. I use Mr. Super Clear. At this point, we're just playing with saturation and midtones until his face is just right. Make sure to add pink on the inside of his waterline to breathe a little life into the plastic. Now we're going to add the pupils. Usually I add these last because I like to make sure the iris is the perfect color before I cover them up. At this point I realize that I have forgotten to add my own beard, so let's add that real fast. I usually keep a goatee and a curly mustache, so that's what we're going to give him. When drawing facial hair, make sure to do small little marks. It looks more realistic, and more like hair in the end. After his mustache is done, we're going to add in some catch lights with acrylic paint. I usually do a single dot and a line on most of my dolls. While we have our white paint out, I'm going to touch up the sclera as to make them a bit more bright, and once those are done and dry, we're going to gloss his face. I usually gloss just under the eyes and the lips. For this doll, I'm using one layer of satin varnish by Liquitex to make sure he isn't too shiny. Once his face is completely dry, we're going to remove his lovely hair wrappings. Please be gentle with this step because we did tape it off. Oof, I'm glad that's off. Now we're going to restyle his hair. So he is getting a high bun. So we're going to center the hair and twist it right at the base.
This is like the fifth attempt at his hair, actually, because it did not want to stay in this shape for me. I'm adding a little clip that actually came from an orchid flower pot. Look, he's all done! Isn't he so cute? I'm so happy I redid him. He looks so much better now. With his face done, we have to reattach his head to his neck. So what we are going to do is take a hairdryer and heat up the neck hole. Once it's nice and warm, we're going to put it back on his body. Please ignore his neck to his face transition. He doesn't know how to contour properly. All that's left is to play dress up. Now I did make these pants when I made my original mini me back in 2019, so I actually don't have footage of that. And unfortunately, the footage for his shoes actually got corrupted, but they're just a pair of black shoes that I got from Claude. And with that, he's all done. I'm so happy with how he turned out. He looks so cute. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.